All right, guys, can I have your attention, please? All right, thank you guys very much for coming. We appreciate it. We hope you had a, a great spring break. Um, we're excited to hear about it. Um, just so you know, this session currently is being videotaped uh, just because Sousa and Eliza are both out sick and, and they do want to be able to see it later as well. I'm sure the dean wants to view it as well. Um, so first thing I want to do is just highlight the email I sent. I know it was a lengthy email last night. I hope most of you read it. Um, just to remind you guys, by this Friday, the 18th, we need your stipend cards and receipt trackers due back to Lisa and the Feinstein Center, please. Uh, the 25th, your pro bono paperwork is going to be due to the Feinstein Center. Um, we ask you to send in any photos from your group shots that you guys got to us, so please email that to Brittany or myself. Um, and then also, I sent a survey link for you guys to fill out, just kind of uh, asking you your thoughts and input on the program, your placement, any concerns or anything you had. So we'd really appreciate if you fill that out. I know we already got a bunch of responses, so if you didn't do that, please make it a point to do that still. <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is just call each project. We're going to ask that a representative from your group placement come up to the podium. Just give us a brief, like no more than two minutes, because we are going to be pressed for time. Uh, just a brief synopsis of what you guys did, the type of projects you did, what you guys liked about it. Um, and then we'll just go from there. So I'm just going to go down the list. You know, I think it's, it is alphabetical. So I'm going to call Kirby from the AIDS Law Project since you were oh. your sole placement. So. Oh, So that was pretty cool. There um, is actually a sort of revolutionary 
Revolutionary Court in the Redmond community in Brooklyn. Um, there's a community court, it's one of the, it's actually the first uh, major court to be more of a rehabilitation focused court instead of a community court. Uh, and myself and Corinne were there on the day that the British Parliament actually came. Um, so we got to sit next to members of Parliament. Um, they were very excited to be there. We were a little, a little confused as to why they were so excited. You know, they explained afterwards. Uh, <laughs> others went to that court on the day that it was a housing court, which was not as engaging for them, but they still enjoyed it. Uh, the attorneys were great. They were welcoming, um, very informative for any of the questions that we asked. So um, the Brooklyn Defenders was an awesome experience, and I would recommend it. Food, we have a representative from Hiding, please. Where? Social Services Immigration. Sorry. He's on the app. You know someone went. Today they look like they're calling you out. So I'm uh, James, me and Pete went down to Annapolis to work with the Chesapeake Legal Alliance. It sounds like everyone was juggling a lot of stuff. We got very targeted on our first day. Our supervising attorney gave us a Maryland State environmental law to research the heck out of, which we did for two days. 
learned all the ins and outs, couldn't find quite what we wanted. Then Wednesday, we actually got to go out in the field and see the, uh, the development area that was supposed to go in on top of some wetlands. It was just close enough that it was going to ruin the wetlands, but just outside of the actual law. So we were sort of preparing an informational war chest for them to bring a lawsuit or at least talk with the county and the state about what they were or were not allowed to do. And, uh, you know, we got sunburned. So that's, that was a good spring break. We didn't spend the whole time in an office. But, so we had fun. My name is Joe. Uh, I went to the city of Central Falls with Alex and Blaine uh, back there. Alex a 1L, Blaine's a 3L. Um, we were assigned uh, all of our different, we, we, we had different assignments um, the moment we first walked in. So we had to choose between three assignments and whatnot. So um, I will just briefly talk about Alex and Blaine's assignments first, and then I'll talk about mine. But Alex, uh, as far as what I remember, she worked on the, because um, we were kind of just doing our own thing, but Alex worked on the uh, city town charter, um, tried to see if, you know, she could maybe make any amendments to it. So it consisted of a lot of research, going out and looking at other cities and towns throughout Rhode Island to make sure um, that Central Falls, I guess, complied with the other cities or just compared at least to other cities' charters as well. And then Blaine, um, was actually out on the town doing quite a lot of work, uh, going around public parks in Central Falls to make sure that the safety precautions were met, if they had certain signs up, if there was any dangers in the public parks. Um, like if, if something needed a fence, he would bring that uh, to the city solicitor's attention, um, or if there needed to be a sign or anything of that sort. Uh, he also spent a lot of research, um, I believe as well, on some other areas in that uh, notion. Um, for me, I worked on the nuisance task force of the city of Central Falls. Um, so I spent a lot of my time with the assistant city solicitor, uh, Bob Weber, and uh, he's actually a recent RW Law alum. Um, the city solicitor, Matthew Jerzyk, is also an RW Law alum, so it was really cool to work with them. Um, I, well, I spent much of my time at the beginning working on one case in particular, uh, just to try and research it on a specific, a specific issue that the assistant city solicitor needed. Um, and then another portion of my time was spent working upstairs on the third floor with the redevelopment agency uh, because the town doesn't have a redevelopment plan. Um, and I was trying to get the gears going for them to try and get some kind of a redevelopment plan going for the city. So on Wednesday, I went with the, the assistant city solicitor uh, to go and check out some vacant homes or abandoned buildings around the city. It was kind of an interesting experience to see that. Really some deplorable conditions there in some of those areas of the, of the town. And then Wednesday night, I also went to uh, housing court in Central Falls, so it was kind of cool to follow the assistant city solicitor in the morning, take some photos of the place, use this evidence for housing court that night, so I got really good experience that way. And then, to top it all off, I don't know if I'm going over time here, but uh, there was a lot going on, but Friday uh, at lunchtime, we ended up going out to lunch in downtown Central Falls with the mayor of Central Falls, Mayor, mayor James Dioza and also um, the Pawtucket representative, Carlos Tobin, as well, which I, which I thought was really cool because I'm actually from Pawtucket, so we had a connection there and we talked mostly all, you know, throughout the lunch about Pawtucket and whatnot and where I live and stuff, but yeah, so uh, it was a really good time. I would definitely recommend it. The people there were awesome. Um, and really the city, it's just great to see the city like 
uh, it, it's been in the news for, you know, it's bankruptcy and whatnot, but um, it's just really good to see that the city is starting to, on, on the right foot again, and it has really good people working for it, so. Go Central Falls. <laughs> I'm Alicia. Olivia and I were at Conservation Law Foundation. Um, so our week was a little atypical for them. They were getting ready for um, a mediation on Wednesday. So our first day we were given some research topics that they just wanted to fine tune on some weak points on um, their mediation prep. And then on Tuesday we were given assignments for um, drafting complaints and given notices of intent. And then on Wednesday we got to vote sit in and participate in mediation preparation, which was really sweet. Um, you don't realize, I think, with environmental law, how much thought goes into all the technical aspects and learning all of the other like intricates and in and outs of like the economic aspects, all of the workings of like a power plant or whatever they're suing at that moment. And then <laughs> also the law and the rules. And it was just stressed very important, like or very much so how important um, administrative law is and just how you really need to know your rules. And then um, the next day they were out of the office so we got to work on our complaints. Thank you, Professor Murphy, for all of your master challenges. <laughs> and then um, on Friday, we got to um, actually go to DEM and go to a meeting where they, we learned about some new um, energy programs being implemented and got to ask some questions. So it was pretty nice week. Go environmental stuff. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, I'm Heather. Uh, we spent a lovely week in Fall River. Uh, we spent a lot of time in court. We got to uh, see a lot of motions, uh, motion suppress, um, a couple continuances, a uh, couple hearings on a few different matters. Um, we, uh, none of us were Title IX, so none of us could actually, you know, argue anything in court. But um, they did have us, uh, we did a bail argument, a mock bail argument in front of the entire office. So that was interesting. Uh, they got really into character. People were screaming, um, you know, as they were the defendants. Uh, so that was pretty interesting. Uh, we got to do a, um, an opening argument as well. So hopefully that will pay off come our argument time at 4LP. So we hope. <laughs> um, we got to speak to Judge McGovern over at district court. Uh, he was really inspirational, just his love for jurisprudence and his knowledge. He talked to us about just not law stuff, but how he got there and how he was appointed twice, because I guess he decided to stop being a judge for a while and then realized, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> and he also pitched us on his book. I think it was called The uh, Artful Deception, or the Deception, right, Deception? All right, yes, uh, so buy it on Amazon and on Kindle, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, we uh, spent, like I said, a lot of time in court. Um, we helped them with a, a couple of cases on, uh, it's a really familial environment at the office, which I, I really appreciate, and I thought it was, it was really nice how they have such a tough job with, you know, uh, the stuff that they do, having to defend people and, um, you know, kids, even, you know, young adults. And um, there's so many different situations. We got to speak to some uh, attorneys from CAFL and from YAD, which are organizations in that public defender realm that deal specifically with children and with children's families. And it was fascinating to see what these people do every day. Um, it was also really interesting on that, on another side there, on the bail argument stuff, on how these attorneys just talk to a client that they just met at lockup because you know they were arrested in the weekend, and ten minutes later they're delivering a bail argument to the court, and you know um, how well they're doing that is whether that guy goes to jail or whether he goes home. So the stakes are high. So it's really fascinating how creative these people are and how much they support each other 
in being able to perform and do right by all of these indigenous folk. And um, so it was really interesting to really get into that and uh, see the defense side of the house and, and how it all operates. Um, uh, do, 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 what else here? I'm trying to make sure I cover everything. <laughs> we, um, um, on Thursday, surprisingly, I'm, I, thought, I thought it was a surprise. The entire office gets together to do something they call case crunching. So if they're not doing training um, on emotions or something of that kind, an attorney will actually bring a case to the office and every single attorney, including like the, from the most experienced to the newest uh, attorney, will actually get copies of all the documents and they work together and figure out what motions they should file, where they should proceed, what arguments they can make, what, you know, um, where, where the case is weak, where the case is strong. So that was really interesting because we got to sit in that and hands-on participate in that. And, uh, you know, hopefully my suggestion will pay off. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so that was really, really, really interesting stuff to do. Um, we spent three out of our five days in court. So we really got to see a lot of court time. Um, really got to experience how your plans don't always work. You know, sometimes uh, people plead it out. Sometimes um, police weren't there to justify and things keep getting pushed by a half hour by a half hour. And, you know, you got to be quick on your feet and um, you have to be able to just, you know, do what you can. So it was a really awarding experience. And, uh, you know, the, it was definitely impressive how much these people are bond together and how close they are um, dealing with the stuff that they deal with. So yeah, I would recommend it to anyone at any time. I actually want to go back. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, I'm James. Um, so we went to CPCS New Bedford, uh, and it was pretty similar to what Edder just said. Um, on Monday, we so we all got to do a little bit of everything. Um, on Monday, we split up. Two of us got to go see the Superior Court. The other two got to go to the District Court and basically uh, shadow in court all day. Um, Every day we break at one o'clock from one to two for lunch. So we got to really get to know a lot of people, um, all of the attorneys, uh, three of which were Roger Williams alum, recent Roger Williams alum, so that was cool. Um, on Tuesday, the other two that went to the Superior Court, we got to sit in on uh, the District Court, which was really cool. We got to go down to lock up, um, talk to new clients, um, basically shadow everything that happens um, throughout the day. On Wednesday, we did something similar to, to sitting in on a case crunch. They, since we hadn't really done a lot of hands-on work, we did our own mini case crunch with Jen, who kind of took over as our supervising attorney, because we hadn't actually met our number one supervising attorney, Tom. We, hadn't, we didn't meet him until like Wednesday. Um, but that was okay. Uh, and uh, he was actually, he was really cool. Uh, we got to see him in action on Friday uh, on a motion to suppress, which he lost, which I think he's gonna appeal because um, the judge essentially didn't listen to the case that he brought up in the law. So that was wild to see. Um, so we get to case crunch on Wednesday on Thursday, we did some research, um, which was just because we hadn't done a lot of, we didn't do any motions, we didn't have to write anything crazy. So if you're looking for that, if you're looking for more of a uh, shadowing, not so much work type of experience than that, then this was really, really good. Um, I would recommend it for everybody, I think. Uh, on Friday, we get to go out to lunch Instead of our one to two lunch, we kind of, we did, we talked about the whole week. We went to a local, like little pub and got to talk about, you know, like a recap of the whole week, which was cool. Got to know everybody a little better.
nonprofit legal service who um, helps qualify and Connecticut veterans with um, a myriad of different legal issues. So housing, family, um, veterans benefits are big because uh, those are a long time to take to get through veterans benefits if you have to go through the VA. So um, it's a small team and we did a lot of research for them. Um, not your normal research, some of it's just on weird VA quirks for their benefits that they didn't have real time to do. So we helped them with that. Um, our biggest project was going through um, the board decisions. Each branch has two different boards to um, make decisions on military discharge. So we had to go through and find keywords because there's literally no rhyme or reason why they decided on different outcomes. So they wanted to put together something that would help them moving forward. So that took a lot of our time. But um, we did a couple of client intakes and some one-on-one -on -one with veterans who are great. They want to talk to you all day. So um, that was pretty rewarding to see at the end of the week what you're actually doing all week. So I would suggest working with, if you take anything away from this experience moving forward, like pro bono work and getting to see what happens afterwards, uh, it's really rewarding and we should do it after graduation as well, um, especially for people like veterans. Uh, so I'd love, love to do that, it was great week. So, awesome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Connor, Tim, Ed, and I were at the Island Institute all last week. It's really interesting. Um, we got there the first day. They kind of gave us like a little bit of a breakdown of all the different things that they're involved in. They, as their name indicates, serve uh, island communities off the coast of Maine. And having very little experience with those communities personally, uh, it was really interesting. Just all the logistics and the difficulties that they kind of face with providing uh, energy in general, particularly renewable energy to those communities, uh, just dealing with, um, you know, when you're talking about an island community and there's maybe like less than 500 people on an island and you have like 10 kids keeping open a school for 10 kids on an island like year round and how that changes year to year. So it was really interesting. Um, uh, Connor and I kind of got to do um, research dealing with, we were prepping testimony in support of a, of a bill dealing with uh, funding for ocean acidification, um, which obviously, as you could imagine, uh, in a state like Maine that's so heavily dependent on uh, you know, fishing as an industry, ocean acidification would be very relevant. Um, and then Adam and Tim kind of got to focus more on the business side, um, providing some kind of training for um, island communities and their access to like growing business and stuff like that. So it was very interesting. Uh, then I know Adam and Tim got to go out to one of the islands to kind of put that into, see, see how the work they were doing would be put into effect. Um, and Personally, I got to, on Friday, um, attend a town hall, a lobsterman's town hall uh, for U.S. and Canadian lobstermen um, and watch them interacting with the scientific community and uh, kind of figuring out how things were going to go for their industry, which was very, very interesting. And if you're, I guess, probably in public interest uh, law in general, uh, I think is a really, really important aspect of it is actually going out into the community that you're serving and getting their input on everything. So uh, it was very interesting. I would certainly recommend it, particularly to anyone who's interested in environmental law. I uh, thought the Island Institute was a great experience. So, so thank you. <laughs>
So uh, I'm Josh Savickle, I'm a 3L. I went with uh, Melvin up there. He's a 1L to Pittsburgh uh, Federal Public Defenders. Kind of an interesting time. We got to see how the federal system differentiates and sometimes quite a bit from the state side. Uh, so for instance, on the state, uh, courts will handle <clears throat> 30 or 40 cases a day, not including trials. Federal level, they'll handle maybe two cases a day, and that's excluding, or that's including trials. Another interesting point we came across was that uh, whenever a criminal defendant pleads out, the, uh, the federal government strips them of their right of a direct appeal, something I never knew or even thought was a thing. Um, let's see, the week uh, wasn't too bad. We um, started off doing a lot of researching. Uh, we got to see some federal interactions. We saw one motion to suppress, uh, which the public defender actually lost. Um, what else happened? Oh, uh, for everyone here, or it should be everyone, and you know the joys of uh, writing a memo. I got to spend two wonderful days research, writing, drafting, redrafting. Showed up there, they're like, oh, hey, you know, this is really great, uh, we don't need it anymore. And I was like, <sighs> I was like, I'm just, I'm going back to the library. <laughs> um, let's see what else. On Thursday, we finally got taken out uh, by our supervising attorney. Got taken out to a cigar lounge and a very nice cognac, so. That was a good time. <laughs> Not sure if I should put that on the record, but you know. Um, I assume you were taken out by our law officer, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep, I can, yep. <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, Melvin actually got a chance to do some research. He was uh, drafting a closing argument and also um, fighting or looking for legal holes because an individual failed a polygraph and because of that he failed his uh, parole. So it's sort of an argument of uh, can you criminalize thought? Um, other than that, have a good time and uh, definitely recommend people take it if they want to. and 
these huge corporations bought the mortgages, foreclosed on the homeowners, or bought the foreclosed homes, and they just rent them out, and uh, they don't really have any presence at the home or have any, you know, uh, sort of interaction with people other than collecting the money. So a lot of issues come up with the conditions of the home, and um, and so we were researching all week regarding that issue. We found out a lot about this. Uh, it seems like a really pervasive issue in a lot of different areas in the country. And so we were working on a project for them pretty much the whole week to create a presentation based on uh, on this issue. And one day we got to go out and investigate. We found the addresses of some of the homes that were owned by a certain corporation. And we went to the certain addresses and it was a little scary. We kept the car running. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they, they sent me to the door every time. But, um, <laughs> Um, I'm Mike. I uh, went with Katie to the uh, Soros Project. Um, it was based out of a nonprofit organization called PRISM, which services uh, the local community and acts as uh, uh, provides them with criminal defense and also if they want to make complaints against the police, which is what we were mostly dealing with. Um, the system in Rhode Island right now, if you make a complaint against a police officer, uh, it's saved or recorded, but it goes to a court. It's not really a court, um, but it's presided over by a higher ranking police officer. So it's not really very fair and the outcome isn't very favorable. Um, so what we were doing is those reports, when they're finally sent out at the end of the year, uh, the officer's name and the complainant's name is redacted. So there's no way to know how many complaints a police officer has. So basically all week we were doing tons of research and um, we're basically compiling a database of police misconduct so that lawyers can potentially use that information as evidence uh, for defense. And then on Friday we gave a presentation to the employees of the organization and um, some of the local youth on what the issue is, what they can do to help. Um, like a lot of people will record police misconduct when they see it and that's very helpful for the project. And eventually, they want to become kind of the go-to for the South Providence community if there is uh, police misconduct that they will first go to the police misconduct project and then file the complaint. So they actually have some legal counsel and they get assistance with the matter. And it was a very rewarding experience. It definitely opened our eyes to the issue that it's talked about, but it's not really talked about in Rhode Island. It may not be as in your face as Ferguson, but it definitely exists here and it's something that needs to be addressed. Um, can we have the Bronx Defenders? Sorry, I guess it's not as alphabetical as we thought. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So my group went to the Bronx Defenders and we were all assigned different areas of law to practice um, based on our preference. We were actually asked in advance, so they were kind of prepared um, for us in that regard. So we have some, I know Eunice, you went to housing court and worked on an attorney in that regard. And um, Matthew was able to do some criminal law. I personally did immigration. I had no prior experience in immigration. Um, and got like absolutely thrown right in. I was able to work with a uh, Roger Williams alum, and he was like, so what experience do you have in immigration? I was like, none, and he was like, oh, okay, let's get started. And we got started immediately. So um, during that time, we were able to go and um, see some cases in court. We were free to do that at any time that we wanted, actually. The courthouse was like right up the block. Mine was not. Um, we went to immigration court one day. What a what a ride to immigration court and as um one of my colleagues earlier mentioned it was a really sad day in immigration court because people were getting deported for like the stupidest things and like the head of dhs was like deporting these people left and right and i was like sit down like why are you doing this but um Nonetheless, um, it was really interesting. I don't know, for some reason it just didn't hit me that we were defending people. So like, I'm like looking at some of these convictions and I'm just like, why did you do this? But it was great to get like thrown right in and be able to advocate for them because a lot of them, like, you know, the, the odds were stacked against them. So they were happy to see that we were there to support them and there was a lot of work. So this wasn't kind of like, oh, you wanna just shadow and not do work. Like, no, we were like, we were doing work. Like, I I had to draft up a brief and I'm not even done. So it got real out there. So go to the Bronx, guys. And the food was great. The food was great. Bodega. The bodega. bodega. So we were with the, uh, the Juvenile Rights uh, Division out of Manhattan, and um, it's actually the Legal Aid Society. Um, we were really fortunate because we didn't have any memos or um, research or anything, thank God. Um, we were actually in court. What's that? Oh, it's, it was amazing. We, we were in court every single day, shadowing attorneys. We saw everything from emergency hearings for abuse and neglect to uh, adoption hearings, we were able to brief and debrief with all the attorneys. Um, we were busy every single day. It just, I mean, a lot of courtroom experience. Uh, we also were able to um, take part in some of their training exercises uh, within their office. So I would highly recommend going to Manhattan, especially if you don't like research and writing. But. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Their job is to then serve on Supreme Court and then 
like that's what they get back to the community, which I thought was really cool and innovative and something that maybe should be established everywhere else, you know, as opposed to putting 16 year olds, in, or not 16, because it's whiskey bars, so under 16 year olds in the jail for small offenses. I thought maybe the court was really interesting. Paula, um, myself, and six other ladies, and Mike, got to <laughs> participate in the Women in Prison Project. Um, so we had awesome, excellent programming that kept us busy. Um, so I'll just mention sort of like three brief highlights. The first was sort of probably the most visceral experience was doing a tour of the Women's Correctional Facility in Cranston, particularly the segregation units, um, learning about the kinds of jobs you can have in prison, which range from one to two to three dollar per day gigs. Um, so that was very eye-opening and somewhat shocking to see also the intake uh, process that happens. The second, obviously the main portion of why we're there is to do research for inmates, uh, female inmates who are expected to be released within the next, I don't know, anywhere from two weeks to a month and to address concerns and do some research for them that they have upon getting out. So anywhere from can I get my record expunged? Uh, how can I uh, find housing or court costs and fines and people owe a lot of money to court? So these are all real concerns that people have upon getting out and it can be very difficult to address. You know, you can kind of end up back in the system again for violating parole, so it was super interesting. Um, and then the last uh, thing I'll just highlight is that we got to sort of, we got to go to district court and witness some public uh, uh, defenders work and Kind of in contrast, I also got to see the Hope Court. If you don't know what the Hope Court is, it's sort of the brainchild of Judge Sullivan to address um, minimum, or sorry, um, high risk, I guess, recently released, um, recently released persons who sort of have issues with either uh, drug problems or addictions. And it's just really an innovative court. I won't go into too much detail because we have two minutes. But um, definitely check it out. It's, it's very innovative, especially when you see, you know, witness an arraignment hearing in district court, and it's just very different <laughs> approaches. So if you're interested in participating, I highly recommend trying for it next year. Um, it's really, really impactful. did the lion's share of work on this program are both home in bed like sick with fever so apparently putting together alternative spring break is taxing on everybody but but uh Brittany and Trevor survived and I just want to say sitting and listening to all of you it's really just fills my heart with such joy that you guys had such amazing experiences and learned so much and got out there and represented the law school well a couple of these were brand new placements uh, Chesapeake Bay and the AIDS Law Project, and some of them are fairly new placements that we just started within the last year or two. Um, so I really thank all of you for giving it your, your all and working so hard and representing us so well and paving the way for future students. And I hope that when you're alums in cool public interest places, you'll welcome our students as well. Um, it takes a village to organize this. You're the biggest group we've ever sent over 60 students as you guys know when this program first started in 2005 we sent like four kids to new orleans so it has grown by leaps and bounds and it couldn't have happened without really hard work from trevor and Brittany, and from sue and joan and lisa who've been working for months meeting in our office every tuesday at two o'clock um, i'm going to miss them because i just closed my door and don't listen um, <laughs> Brittany and Trevor get a little Roger Williams swag. And I know they're going to make a push again for you guys to fill out those surveys because it really gives us great data. And Susie and Liza and I are really excited to read your journals. It shows us so much just sort of hearing what you guys did every day. And so thanks for your enthusiasm. Thanks for being so great. And I'm going to turn it back over to you guys. Okay. Hi, everyone.
everyone, so we're almost done. Um, we just wanted to say thank you again for participating in such an amazing experience. We hope you really enjoyed it. Um, from the sounds of it, most if not all of you did um, for the most part. Um, and so yeah, thank you, fill out the surveys. I don't know if they're anonymous or not, but if they're not, we'll come hunt you down because we want your feedback. So um, just, it takes probably like five minutes, yes or no questions. Um, so it would be greatly appreciated. Um, last but not least, I know probably like three or four of you have already um, sent us emails indicating your interest, but if you're thinking of doing what Trevor or I did this year, being an ASB coordinator, let us know. Um, it's a great experience. It is a lot of work, but it's very rewarding. Um, I wouldn't have changed it for the world this year. So um, just shoot us an email. Because there has been already a lot of interest, we'll probably have an interview process of some sorts. At that point, we'll give you more of a job description. We want to work on that and get it really thorough for you guys. But um, it is a great experience. We encourage a lot of you to show interest. And what was the last? Let me just say one other thing. I want to be sure that everybody knows you can do alternate spring break three years. Um, so if you don't come feel like if you just didn't it as a one-out, you're done. And you want to try something else, we hope they'll come back. <laughs> as many years as you want to apply, you can do it. So, oh, and also we're going to be making a brochure. We typically do a faculty presentation, but just given with the timing of everything, that might not work out this year. So we're going to really do an in-depth brochure. It's going to include some of the photos that you sent. and. Um, so really, another plug is really put some effort into your journals. We, of course, we'll ask you for your permission, but we use some quotes from those journals in the brochure um, to kind of brag about the program that gets, and that gets sent around to people who are donors, faculty. So um, really put some thought into those journals, reflect and really share your experience because we would love to share that further down the road. So um, keep your eyes peeled for that. We'll let you know. and. Of course, we won't publish anything without asking you first. So anyway, thanks.